guys, it's Sarah and today we're going to talk about the books that I read in the month of March. I ended up reading seven, which is good, and I'm going to kind of group these in two categories a little bit because they fit categories pretty much. So I'm going to do that and it's going to go pretty quickly because some of these I've already covered in other videos, so I'll just reference those. Okay, we're going to start with middle grade. So I did read three middle grade books in the month of March for middle grade March. And I did do some that fit some of the prompts that were part of the middle grade March challenges. So the first one that I read was Wish Tree by Katherine Applegate. And this one, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I read it in one sitting. It's very easy <laughs> to do that. And this follows a literal tree that is in this neighborhood. And it's very infamous for people putting little wishes on it during a certain time and hoping that those wishes come true. And it's following the family who lives right next door to the Wish Tree and some challenges that they are facing in their city as uh, they are very different from a lot of people. There are a lot of things that are happening in the city that they're getting blamed for. So it does um, have a theme of racism in here. So there is that. And you're following the girl who is in this family and her challenges and making friends and all that stuff. Now, this is literally from the perspective of the tree. <laughs> So you get the tree, you get some of the animals that live on or near the tree. And so the story is being told that way. So you're not getting the perspective of the human characters. You're getting this perspective of the tree and then the animals as well. Um, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. And this was for a prompt from the middle grade March of a one word title. So I ended up giving this one four stars. I don't think it's one that I'm going to hang on to for the long one because it wasn't blow me away amazing <laughs> for me, but I did enjoy it. And then I read a book on my Kindle. I ended up reading Coyote Lost and Found by Dan Gaiman Hart. And this one is the sequel to The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise, which I read last year for Middle Grade March. And it was my favorite. I absolutely loved it. That was a five-star book for me. And so I was really excited to read the sequel because it just came out in the month of March. And I was very excited to get to it. Now this one has animals on the cover. So that is the prompt for middle grade March that I was able to fulfill with this one. And it's one of my most anticipated books. It's part of a series. So it was kind of checking a whole bunch of boxes for me for this round. And I didn't like it. <laughs> I, I really didn't like it. Here's the problem I had with it. Um, so we're back with Coyote and her dad. And they there's a discovery. I'm not going to give too many details about anything. Um, I'll just give you the main basic thing. But there's a discovery that happens and then they end up uh, going back on their bus to um, fulfill a mission, basically, based on this discovery. And here's the problem I had with it. <sighs> I didn't feel that there was character development with Coyote from the first book. In the first book, I understood the decisions she was making and why she was making them. But in the first book, she came a long way by the end. But then in this one, I feel like she was right back to where she started. And that frustrated me. It was just, I got really frustrated with what she was doing and the decisions that she was making. And I just, I don't know, I just had problem after problem after problem with it. And the more I kept reading, the more problems I was having. And I didn't like a lot of the scenes that were happening that maybe were supposed to be funny. And I just, I was like, mm, I don't know. I just, I, I ended up not enjoying it. And that really made me sad because I was really looking forward to this one. But I just, I had a lot of problems with it. And I can't go into too much detail without spoilers. So I won't do that. Um, but yeah, I ended up giving it two stars, which really made me sad. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't purchase it. I did read it on my Kindle. I got an early copy from work. Um, so I'm really happy that I did not purchase it. Um, and it did help me make a decision that I will not read another one. If it if they uh, do another one in this series, I'll, I'm just going to stick with the first one and be good. I did love the first one. I still have it on my shelves and I will keep it because I did love it. But yeah. I'm not going to read another one, unfortunately, which, you know, can happen. Okay, and then the third middle grade book that I read was Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. This is book number two in the 
Supernatural Investigations series. And this is another one where I read the first one and I absolutely loved it. It was, I think it made it in my top 10 the year that I read the first book. It was, I read it soon after it came out. And so this is book number two. I've had it for a little while and I was very excited to read it. And I read this one for not only middle grade March, but it's also a buzzword for the month for me because um, the buzzword for the month of March was a name in the title and Amari is part of the title and that is her first name. So checked off that, checked off catching up on a series for me because there's only two books out right now. Book number three is coming later this year. Very excited about it. And I really enjoyed this one. It did take me a while to read this because some of my reading time this month <laughs> was a little bit lower. It did seem like it was taking a little bit longer to get to some of the really good scenes, but the good scenes were really good. There's a lot of really creative, magical things happening in here. And I liked the main plot point of the book as well and kind of where the direction was it was taking. And I liked that Amari was challenged. And um, you really saw Amari get frustrated in this book. You know, she was hitting a lot of road stops and there were a lot of roadblocks in here and it's because of certain characters. Um, but you see her deal with those. And so I thought that was really good. And I just, yeah, I really liked it a lot. I can't say too much without spoilers, so I won't, I won't do that. I also read Amari for my five-star prediction. So I'm not going to give you my rating yet. You have to wait for that one. <laughs> At the end of April, I'll let you know what my final rating on this was. But um, yeah, it was good. Okay, so the next two books I featured in a reading vlog that I just put up. It was one that took me a while to get through, <laughs> uh, just the vlog in general, but I did end up finishing that vlog and I was very happy with it. Um, so I did read The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix and I read Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This was part of my reading vlog where I read some recommendations from my coworkers at Barnes & Noble. So I went around the store and looked at some shelf talkers. Um, so you know, books that are being recommended by the booksellers. And I picked three that I had not read yet, but were on my shelves and I read them and I really enjoyed that process. Um, so these are the two that helped me finish that vlog. So I do have much more details in that vlog about what I thought of these books, but a very quick rundown is the Final Girl Support Group was good. I ended up giving it three stars. I didn't love it. <laughs> um, this gets compared to Final Girls by Riley Sager a lot mainly because it follows final girls and they start getting picked off um, and you're trying to figure out what's going on and who's killing them. Uh, so a very similar premise, very different books, but very similar premise. I preferred final girls much more over this one, um, but I still really liked it. It was three stars. Um, he is an author I want to read to zero. So this is, will be one I'm hanging on to regardless. And I'm really happy that I read it. And then Heartless by Marissa Meyer, I really enjoyed. I gave this one four stars. I really liked the take of an origin story on the Queen of Hearts. And I liked, I, I just really liked it. <laughs> um, the magic system in here is really cool. And um, yeah, I just, I really liked it. I like Marissa Meyer. So um yeah, but if you want to see more details and me, you know, kind of reading through the books, I will link my vlog down below. Another one that I read on my Kindle is The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. This is a NetGalley book, which is something I'm trying to concentrate on right now. So I'm reading NetGalley books on my Kindle at night. That's been something I've been trying to make in an intention. Um, so I was really just in the mood for a steamy romance. That's what I was wanting. <laughs> and so I picked this one up and I really liked it a lot. Like... Um, more than I thought I was going to. I was a little bit nervous about it because I'd heard mixed things and I wasn't quite sure, but I really just enjoyed it. This is very steamy, very steamy. So it, it looks cute, <laughs> but it's very steamy. So just very, very detailed sexual encounters in here. So forewarning about that. Um, but I loved the characters. I loved their chemistry together and you could really feel the tension. And then there were parts where I was getting frustrated with one or both of the characters because I was like would you just stop being so stubborn what are you doing there's not really a miscommunication I would say in this one there is kind of like a lying by omission or like a hiding something intentionally type thing so it's not not so much miscommunication but there is a little bit of that frustration where you're just like just say it just just say it just tell this person this <laughs> you know um but it wasn't so bad that I didn't enjoy it obviously and yeah, I just, I don't know. I really, really liked it a lot. I was really, really happy that I liked it so much. Um, and I liked 
how the story unfolded overall. And I could definitely see myself reading more from Lana Ferguson. I actually have another one of hers called The Fake Mate, which is actually a, a paranormal romance. Um, it's... <sighs> It's weird. It's not in our paranormal section at the store. It's in our romance section, but it like one of the love interests, one or both of the love interests, I think, are werewolves. And but they're human too. So, you know. Um, and then she has another one coming out later this year that I'm into. Um, I just picked up one that's coming out over the summer, which is a hockey romance, so it's not paranormal at all. So she's got a couple, like two different romance genres going on at one time, and she's releasing two books a year as of right now. And I'm totally down for it. So I'm really interested. I think this could be an author that I end up really enjoying. Um, but yeah, The Nanny was great. I really liked it a lot. Okay, and the last one that I read from the month of March is Burn Town. This is by Jennifer McMahon. I listened to this on audio. The audiobook narrator was Abby Creighton. Um, this one was part of my I Was So Excited revisit, and I finally read it. It took me a while. I'm... I, kept thinking about it and it's been on the top of my TBR cart for a couple of months and I was like I need to get to that and so I finally did um and for me it was just okay I'm wondering about Jennifer McMahon I feel like she might be a similar situation with me with Simone St. James I love Simone St. James but when I read some of her older works I don't love them as much like not even close they're just kind of very middle of the road probably three stars but her newer stuff, four or five stars, easy. Um, and I might, I feel like this might be the same situation because this one was a three star for me. But The Winter People was five stars. I loved The Winter People. <laughs> and that's in like one of her newers. So I'm I'm wondering if it's just that type of situation where maybe the back, 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 back list is not going to work for me so much as more as her new newer stuff. So um, there's a couple authors like that for me where I enjoy their newer stuff much more to the point where I don't really want to go back and read the backlist anymore. And I think this might be a similar situation. I'm just getting that feeling from it. So, okay. So this follows a girl who lives in this town and there's a, there's a big history with this town with um, some people who have died and who were murdered and all that stuff. But the stories change all the time and no one really knows exactly what happened. And this girl is part of this family. And so she, even she doesn't know what happened with her family. She thinks she does, but she was told different things and all this stuff. So some things were starting to happen where she's starting to piece some things together and, um, you kind of watch her journey through that. And then she meets some new people and they kind of help her through that as well. And I don't know, for me, it was just okay. Um, I definitely didn't enjoy the narrator. Didn't enjoy the narrator. Um, and the story was fine. I feel like it's something that I'm just going to eventually forget over time. <laughs> and um, yeah, nothing really stood out to me as this is great. I love this angle. And I don't know. So it, it's just not one that, like really held my attention. Even though I finished it, um, it was just fine. Okay, guys, those are all the books that I read for the month of March. It was pretty good. Um, seven books is good. And I really liked a lot of them and some of them not so much, but that's okay. <laughs> that's part of reading. So let me know down below if you've read any of these. Let me know your thoughts and I will see you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.